Welcome back to my channel. Glad you could join me. This weekend we came up to the Sunshine Coast to celebrate my wife's birthday last night. Sunrise was at 5 a.m. this morning and there was no way I was getting up for sunrise. Just had such a late night and this weekend wasn't about coming here just to take photos. It was to celebrate my wife's birthday, to get away for a weekend with my family, which we don't have often the chance. I got here at 6.30 this morning, took a couple of photos. There was a lot of cloud about. You can see there's no clouds now, but at 6.30 this morning, there were some nice clouds about. But I want to just talk about composition of what you can do, how to set up your camera when you miss sunrise. So let's get cracking. You can see what we're photographing. These nice little old boating jetties. Now these date back, I think, to the 60s. This one's had a lot of upkeep to it, so it looks pretty nice. I found this nice little spot. We've got the sun rising to my right here. But you know, sometimes things happen. I got all set up, took a couple of photos, and then I realized that I left my little Sony ZV-1 back in the hotel. So I had to quickly race back, grab the camera, come back, and by the time I reset up here, the clouds have gone. But I still want to show you how I go about setting up, even when I'm in holiday mode, still planning my shot. I'm using my Nikon D500, the Takina 11 to 20, at 20 mils to take the photos. I've got a three-stop medium grad Nissi filter plus a polarizing filter on. There's so much blue in the sky and reflections that I'm using the polarizer just to help me balance out the image. When we're using a polarizer this is the ideal to either use the viewfinder but I find using live view on your camera is so much easier because it actually helps you put the polarizer exactly where you want it. My settings I'm at f11. I just want as much depth at field as possible. I'm going to use the shutter speed just to balance out my exposure. ISO of course is at set at 100. My white balance is set to sunny. Now I might even change it to cloudy because the sky is so blue you can see that if I set it to cloudy or I could use manual white balance but because I'm shooting in JPEG and in RAW and some people that follow my channel only shoot in JPEG I want to show what it's like using just a preset. Some of the lower end digital SLRs don't have manual white balance. They will have your presets. You'll have auto and then you'll have sunny, shade, fluoro, cloudy. We're going to use sunny to start off with and if I feel that it's too blue then I can go into cloudy and that'll just warm up the jetty and that will give a little bit of warmth to our image. Now I just want to show you what happens if we don't have the polarizer set correctly. We're around the beach and all that we really need a polarizer. There's so much water, so much sky around. Look at the video. Can you see that the left hand side of the image is very dark and then our right hand side is quite bright. So I use the polarizing little the little wheel here just to balance out the image. I turn it around. There, that is really good. And the good thing with using a polarizer as well, it's like a mini ND filter. It darkens your image a bit. So you're actually bringing down your shutter speed. You can smooth it out. Now I'm not using an ND filter. Why? Because there is just no need. We're in daytime here. There's hardly clouds in the sky. All an ND filter is going to do is give me a longer exposure, but it's not going to have like the real feel to our image here. So I don't need an ND filter. Take one photo here just to show you. I'm using touch screen so I'm just touching right on the front of the jetty here that looks really nice now I'm just looking at the histogram it's really close but I could just push it that little bit more because I've got so much shadows here so my settings were 1 30th of a second f11 ISO 100 so I can probably come down to about 1 20th of a second come down to 1 20th of a second take a photo once we've taken this photo we'll look at the RGB highlights I really don't want to blow my highlights now I've come down to 1 20th and I can see just behind this little boathouse that I've blown the sky out. We'll come up to 1 25th of a second. The last thing I want to do is blow highlights. That's it. Perfect. No blown highlight. Why would I zoom all the way into 20 mils when I'm using a lens from 11 to 20? Because there's no clouds in the sky. There's no need to. This is what would, the image would look like if I came out all the way to 11 mils. I will take another photo and I'll show you the difference. Look, can you see the difference? I'm so far out that I've really lost the detail. This at 11 mils early in the morning when there was all the clouds about would have been brilliant, but there's no clouds in the sky. 
sky. So I prefer the image taken at 20 mils. But that doesn't mean that you just take one image at 20 mils and go like, yep, okay, take a couple of images, take an image at 20 mil, take an image at 11 mil, split the difference, take an image at 16 mil. We'll come to 16 mil. We might even find that 16 mils is actually better than 20 mil. If you look at the boathouse on the image here, you can see that there's a big V where all the shade from the sun comes in. That's because we're just here quite late. It's nearly 7.30. Remember sunrise was at five o'clock. So two and a half hours ago, the sun came up. An hour ago, or even an hour and a half ago, would have been perfect. This is not so much a, I'm taking terrific images here. It's to give you an idea of when you're out and about, you can say, okay, well, I'm going to make do with the best situation. So take a look at this image here. This was taken at 25 past six when I first got here this morning. My white balance was set to sunny and I was shooting at 20 mils. You can see the clouds are in the back of the sky. Remember, this is just a JPEG straight off the camera. It looks quite nice. The white balance was set to sunny and you can see it's just very bluish. There's no warmth in it. This is what happens when I change it from sunny to cloudy. There's a bit more warmth in the image. This is why I'm trying to explain that sometimes to use your white balance to get the image that you want. I am a firm believer in what you see is what you get. And if you're shooting in JPEG, you definitely want to be watching what your white balance is doing to your image because this is something that when you go home, you're going to find very hard to modify in post-processing. You can brighten up your image, you can darken it a little bit, add some contrast and all that, but white balance is very hard to modify. So get your white balance right in your camera. You can see here, I would have been very dissatisfied with the white balance set on sunny, but this early in the morning with such a blue sky, it wasn't warm enough. So today's video wasn't about coming out and sunrise and getting fantastic shot. It was talking about what to do when you're in a holiday situation, when you just want to chill out with your family. I wasn't going to be here for sunrise, but I still decided, okay, well, I got up at about six o'clock. I know where this is. It's only about 10 minutes from the hotel. Quickly come down here, took a really nice photo, an hour and a half after sunrise, I still got some really nice photos, but it's still showing you how I decide to pose this image. And you can see that I'm quite close to the boathouse. Now check out this image. I took this image just up near the footpath here, looking down on the jetty. Can you see the big difference? Look at the difference from this image here to this image here. The viewpoint changes, and this is something that you've really got to think about. I anchored myself here and I think like, hang on, before I just keep taking photos, what would be the best viewpoint? I thought I'd move further away from the little boathouse. It didn't look good. Why? Because I was losing much of the front of the jetty. I'd see too much of the side, decide to just jump up here on the side of the road, but I'm looking down and I'm like, no, it just doesn't have that feel. So. I just came back to my original spot. I hope this video has helped you just give you some ideas on not to feel sad about if you've missed sunrise and the opportunities that you can still get if you're out early in the morning. And this also applies if you're out late in the afternoon. You might be able to get out for sunset, but that doesn't mean that you still can't take photos. You could take photos before sunset or after sunset. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, stay safe, enjoy your photography, even when you're on holidays, and I'll See you next time.